In this video, I'm going to log in to my Fat Cow account, set up an FTP user, and connect that to Dreamweaver to my website. So on the Fat Cow homepage, I'm going to click Control Panel. And then I will log in with the username and password that you set up when you created your account. Once you log in, look for this button up here. It's nine little squares, but it's actually your hosting tools. Once you're on this page, click the FTP icon at the top. And then do create new FTP account. So you can use the same user and password as your account, although it's not a great idea. So add in a new username and give that a unique password and confirm it and in this bottom box here we're going to leave this blank for the root directory so the root directory which would also just be represented with a slash just means that this FTP user will have access to the entire website through FTP. There may be circumstances with some sites where you might want to set up accounts where only certain people can edit certain folders or directories, and that's where you would use this. So I will click Create FTP User. And there you can see my new FTP account. So now we need to set that up in Dreamweaver. So I'm going to use this little demo site and I'm going to click on its name over in the files panel and go to manage sites. You can also use the site menu and go to manage sites as well. Either one will work. So I'm going to double click on the name of the site and that will open my options. So we've used this window where we can give it a name for us to remember it by and we point it to where our local files are on our computer. For this, we're going to go to Servers and click the plus sign. So I'm going to fill in Fat Cow for the name. Again, this is just a name for us to remember it by. And we are going to connect using FTP, so I don't need to change that. The FTP address should just be FTP dot and then your domain name. So I'm not going to put in www, I'm not going to put in http or https, just fdp dot and then your domain name. The username is the one that we just created and the password as well is the one that we just created. So next click test and you should get a confirmation. If you get an error, make sure that you've typed your password correctly. Once I've tested this, I'm going to make sure that the save button is checked so that this is always on file. And then you are ready to go. So we can click save on these windows. If you get this message, um, that's fine. It just needs to update all its settings for your site management. Just click OK and done. And now we are ready to upload our files. If you've kept working files like I have for the site, Inside your root folder, while that's not the best practice, we can work around it. So for those folders, click on them, and in the right-click menu, there should be an option for cloaking, and then you need to choose cloak. So basically, cloaking means that when this site syncs or uploads files to your live web hosting server, it won't include these folders. So you want to do this to anything you don't want to upload. So anything that's not your HTML, your CSS, your images, everything else should be cloaked. So that will give me the little red slash. If your site folder doesn't have any working files in it, you don't need to do that step. But it's good to know that you can cloak some folders so they don't get automatically uploaded when you do your syncing. 
So I'm going to select my root folder, which is the top here where it says site. And I'm going to click the upload arrow. So this is going to upload my entire site to my web hosting based on the FTP information that I entered. So I'm going to click OK. And now if I go to my website, you can see that this page is up here and this is now live on the internet on my web hosting. So if you make changes, you need to remember to update things. So let's say that on our home page, and I have my index.html page open right now, we realized that there was uh, some error. So if I needed to add more text here, I can edit this page as I normally would. And I'm just going to add in a new paragraph there and repeat that third paragraph just to give us some noticeable content changes. I'm going to make those changes as I normally would. I'll save that file. Once I'm done editing, I can select the file that I've edited and upload it. So all I edited was my index.html file. So I can select that file and click the up arrow. It'll always want to give you this message, should dependent files be included in the transfer. That would be things like CSS and images that you may have edited and not really considered when you were editing the HTML. So I know that I don't have any dependent files, but I'm just going to click yes, just to be in that habit. And if I go back to my browser, I'm going to hold shift and click refresh so it pulls the page new and not for my cache. And you can see that now live online, I have this second paragraph copied. If you have been working on your site for a while and you've made a lot of changes, what you can do is click the synchronize option. So this button kind of looks like a refresh symbol. And if you hover over it, it will say synchronize with remote server. And then you'll notice it'll have the name that you gave your fat cow FTP information. So I just call it mine fat cow and you can see it there. So when you click that button, you should get this box. And we want to synchronize our entire template demo site. And for direction, we want to put newer files to remote. So this means that we are going to upload any file that we have most recently edited since our last upload to our hosting server. Local files are on your computer, remote files are on your web hosting. We also have the option to get newer files, which is to download any file that has a newer edit date from our remote web hosting server. You may use this option if you're working in a group on a site and you need to synchronize things at the beginning of each day, get the changes that your colleagues have made so that you can work from there. Since we are each only uploading to our own private servers, we are only putting files. So I'm just going to choose put newer files to remote. And then I will click the preview button, which is going to give us a breakdown of which files it needs to upload. So it sees that these files have all been edited on my local site on my computer here in Dreamweaver, more recently than the dates on them on my server. So as long as this list looks all right, I will click OK. And then I can go to my live site online. And I'm going to do a shift refresh. And I can see those other two pages that I have are there live. So that's how you create a FTP user in FatCow. Enter that in Dreamweaver for your site and then connect Dreamweaver to that FTP site to upload to your web hosting.